recording for the last hour and before the lecture I already showed the slide so by using the, the 3d matrix we have really easy to make these kinds of pie charts because we can just use the one dimension if we want to look at the fish dimension uh, we can use the second dimension if we want to look at the lake dimension um, and then making the pie charts teaches us that there is significant differences between the experiments that have been done in the different years um, and this comes from the fact that the different lakes have been fished very differently in a way um, and so the, the contribution to each lake of the to the total amount of fish caught um, varies very much um, and this also causes the different species to have a very different influence on the total amount of fish that that were caught um, so and the observations that we made was that there are some significant differences in fish composition per year um, there is different years um, have, as such the contribution is different and that means that we're probably not allowed to draw any conclusions across years and across lakes um, so we have to probably limit ourselves to looking at individual lakes um, and then we run into the issue that the sample size that we get from these lakes is, is relatively low compared to the total amount of fish that we caught um, so is there a solution and of course yes there is um, group similar lakes together which is the first idea that comes to mind we just pretend that all of these fish were caught in like one big mega lake um, but of course that's not something that we can easily do but if lakes aren't too different we might be able to group them uh, win win one two three thank you for following um, so if we group them we increase the amount of fish and then we also increase the amount of statistical power that we have um, so that's kind of what we want to do so have out of all of these piles of Legos that we have, so all of these different lakes, um, we're just wanting to kind of see which lakes are similar and we put those together. If the lakes would have been all fished in a standardized way, would that change the picture? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you S science or, or um, not so much science, but hey, if you do an experiment, and you then repeat your experiment you have to repeat it in the exact same way to get data which you can can merge together um, and the standardized way here like hey, of course there it could be that from one year to the next uh, the dominant fish species in a lake changes and then the year after another fish species happens to be in the lake right these lakes are uh, maintained by people some of them will be filled with fish um, hey, there's um, um, organizations that are managing these different lakes and they have different ideas of how these lakes are managed um, but yeah if you if you want to set up an experiment like this um, you would probably want to say well we look at three lakes right so then we have three more or less well biological replicates that seems a little bit weird because it's not a biological replicate yeah, but it, it it's you have three replicates right so hey, if I would if someone would ask me and would come to me like oh, I'm writing a project proposal the first thing that I always say to them is limit yourself in the number of groups that you are creating because the more groups you create the smaller the sample size in each of the groups the less statistical power and the more likely that you're going to miss some very very significant effect um, and so I would say look at three lakes <clears throat> it could be that there's a massive nutrient input leading to a massive fish abundance increase yes that might be the case but if you would standardize it and say well each lake every year we fish for one hour at one specific spot right so we, we do like an electro fishing and we fish for one hour right then the first year we might catch 200 fish if there then would be a massive increase in nutrients then the next year we would fish um, this lake and then we would catch 400 fish but then that is something that we can more or less compare to each other right that the increase is because we now have standardized the time that we are fishing right so if I'm fishing for an hour and catching a hundred fish 
next year I fish for an hour and catch 200 fish, then I can kind of conclude from that that there is an increase. But in the data that I, or in the, in the data set that we're looking at, it doesn't seem like something like that happened. It seemed like there is, we fish a little bit here, we fish a little bit there, we fish a little bit here, in a, in a way. Like, um, which, it doesn't seem that there are standardized ways, like um, we fish for an hour, we use this technique, um, and so th th there are some, some, some issues there. Um, and of course it happens that populations increase or populations decrease. Um, but of course it's very strange to see that in, a f in, in one of these lakes, and like the Lomar Lake that we looked at, that in one year 90% of the fish we caught is type X, and then a year later we fish again, and now we catch almost none of the fish from type X. Because then you have to start wondering what happened. Right? Did, did all of these fish of type X die? Um, but the, 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 you can only kind of um, see that when you, when you standardize your, your fishing methodology. Yeah, so if you have different sampling efforts between years and lakes, then of course you cannot compare between years and, and lakes. It would be like doing a laboratory experiment and um, using method A the first time and then using method B and then using method C. Um, and the first time you use one kilogram as input and the second time you use 50 kilograms as input, um, then of course the data that you gather is not consistent and you, you can't easily group those. Group those. Um, but hey, let's try and figure out if there are some of these lakes which are similar, which we can actually group. So when are two things equal, right? So when are two things considered to be equal? So hey, we can use statistics, right? So we can test if two lakes are different. If they are not different, then they should be equal. The big issue here is, is that we have only nine fish species per lake. We have more, of course, when we before we started minimizing it, but there we run into the issue that, that some of these fish species are very rare. We only, uh, we only count like five fish in a single year. And in the next year, we all of a sudden have 200 of them. So it's, it's really difficult to use statistics in this case um, because you have such varying distributions. But we can use a trick, right? Like I showed you that we can just rely more or less on the correlation. And um, normally I would say that if you compute a correlation and a correlation about 0 0.8 or higher, uh, that you could say that those things are equal, right? If I, if, I measure two, or if I measure a whole bunch of data and I measure a whole bunch of data later on and there's a, there's a correlation between the measurements that I did yesterday and today and this correlation is high, then that means that I've probably measured more or less the same thing. Um, but you could use a factor that incorporates different efforts and catches catches per unit effort. No, yeah, yeah, that would be a standardization as well. That if you take the, for example, the amount of spots that you fished for an amount of time, right? Then you could define that and then you could calculate fish based on that. But again, here, you have to remember that if you only catch one or two fish, then standardizing based on a unit of effort will kind of artificially inflate that massively um, if, if you catch 200 versus when you catch two, right? So it's, it's not easy combining these things and um, for every step in your analysis that you make, um, uh, you have to defend that. You know, in a way, right? If you want to publish a scientific paper, then a reviewer will kind of scrutinize every step that you did. And the reviewer will have their own views on how to do this. And if they don't align with what you did, then you run into issues because then hey, you end up in conflict with a reviewer. Or if you have three different reviewers having three different opinions on the same kind of technique that you did, then it becomes even harder, right? Because you cannot satisfy people who say, hey, if you have a reviewer saying you should use a t-test and the other one says you should use a Welsh test and the other one says you should use a linear model, right? You can't satisfy all three of them. 
So, and a any approach that you think will then be rejected by at least two out of three reviewers because you can only satisfy one of them. Um, but then the way that I thought about it is that, well, we have three different years. Um, in my mind, I'm just going to say everything which is correlated above 0 0.8 is um, more or less equal. Um, so if I sum the correlations from each of the years, um, then when the correlation, the summed correlation is above 2.4, um, then they are equal, right? So I'm just saying, well, 0 0.8 per year is good enough. And I'm leaving a little bit of room because of course, hey, you can sum up to 2.4 by having a correlation of one and a correlation of one and a correlation of 0 0.4. Hey, but on average, if the correlation between two lakes across the three years is higher than 2.4, it means that from year to year to year, um, the correlation between these lakes tended to be relatively good or relatively okay. So we, we kind of can assume that we've put in the same amount of effort and we measured more or less the same amount of, of, of or the same composition of fish within these two lakes. So, um, Again, using the 3D matrix, it becomes really easy to do the correlation, right? Because we can just say fishy 2017, um, hey, use the Spearman method just to make sure that we, um, that we don't end up having single outliers influencing our results a lot. And of course, th there is already the issue with the fact that we only have like nine or 10 species uh, of fish. So correlation estimates come with a relatively large margin. But hey, since we're doing it three times and then just summing them up, um, I can just say, well, hey, I do first correlation, second and third for the three different years. And then I just sum them all up and I just ask the question, which ones are higher than 2.4? And then what I see is that like the cod hamster colk is a lake which is unique. It doesn't really have any other lake with which it is comparable. Um, hey, and you of course see that every lake is identical to itself, which is kind of logical because correlation always will tell you that. Um, but we see that, for example, the Steedorfer Bachersee, the Weidekampsee and Salzdorf, um, they are relatively well correlated, the, the three of them. So these three lakes, we could probably group into a single mega lake. Right, because those three lakes have relatively good correlation with each other across the three different years that we measured. Um, so conditions might have been very, very similar. Um, and of course, we could also look at the map and say, well, if lakes are relatively close to each other, um, then that might might help as well a little bit. So hey, conclusion here is we can merge, probably likely treat right? Seedorfer Bachersee, the Weidekampsee and Salzdorf as a single lake. Um, but the question also becomes how is the stability for a lake from one year to the other year, right? If there's massive differences from one year to the other year, then of course it becomes really hard to say something about stability over time, right? If we want to compare what we caught in 2017 with what we caught in 2018, then of course the composition in 2017 should be kind of similar to the composition we got in 2018, irregardless of how many fish we caught, right? Um, we, we would assume that 75% would be Rotauge and 25% would be Bars. Um, yeah, so the stability of lake from one year to another, again, Hey, we can we can do this relatively easy. So what I do is beforehand I create a new two-dimensional matrix which is filled with NAs, right? So it is a matrix which is filled with NAs. Um, I'm just going to take the columns from the fishy matrix. So these are the the lakes uh, that we have uh, the lakes that we have. So lakes are going into the rows. Um, then we have three different years, which are going into the columns. And then we're just going to make, uh, we are going to add the, the names to it. So we're going to give the row names and we're going to give the column names. And we have three, um, three different comparisons, right? Because we can compare 2017 to 2018. We can compare 2018 to 2020 and 2017 with 2020 as well. Right, so I just do pairwise all of the different years together. It's getting very dark here, actually. Um, but have we compute the correlations between the different years. So we go for L in the, the names of the lakes. Uh, just compute the correlation between 2017, 2018 and put it in our matrix and do the same thing for 
2,000 or for the other comparisons, right? So we just fill them up um, and look at the correlation. So how does this look? Um, yeah, so here we see the correlation coefficients and we see that um, there are some lakes which are very consistent. So they, they, they are fished and the, 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 the fish that are being pulled out of the lake are very similar in 2017 to 2018. Um, they are very similar from we look 2018 to 2020 and again for 2007 they're very similar. right? So the Cothamster Kolk is a lake which is really stable across time in a way. Um, but we see that Hopples um, is definitely not stable and even a little bit weird because from 2017 to 2018 we see that the correlation is relatively low. From 2018 to 2020 the correlation is also low. But 2017 to 2020 we see that there's a perfect correlation. So the fish that were caught in 2017, the distribution of the fish is exactly identical to the distribution of fish that we caught in 2020. While in the year in the middle, the distribution was more or less completely different. Um, yeah, but we see that yeah, there's, uh, Hopples has like relatively low correlation from year to year. Um, let me actually put my webcam up a little bit um, because um, it's getting really dark I think I think we yeah that looks a little bit better I um, think we're getting a massive thunderstorm soon um, there are lakes which have medium correlation as well um, yeah, so we have the Wiese de Meer, the Weidekampsee, uh, State of Bachersee, Salzdorf and Blockhorst. Those are, those are lakes which have relatively okay correlation. Um, and all the other lakes seem very, very stable across time. Um, so yeah, but this is just something to keep in the back of our minds when we, when we want to um, kind of compare two years to each other. Uh, we can do that for most of the lakes, but for Hopples we need to make sure that we never compare 2018 with 2017. Um, and especially like here, Salzdorf, it's not that high, but it's not that low either, right? But comparing 2017 with 2018 is a correlation of 0 0.52, which is not the best correlation in the world. It only means that there's a 25% overlap, which is 0 0.5 to the, to the power of 2. So the, the squared correlation is known as the, the shared variance. Um, so the, the shared variance is relatively low. Um, only 25% from year to year. All right, so now we looked a lot of, at our data just to get kind of a basic understanding in what's going on. Hey, which lakes are the lakes that we can look at? Um, but of course, this experiment is much bigger because they also applied all kinds of treatments, um, apparently. So I, load, uh, I, I loaded in the data set, uh, which is called Rotauge, where we have the size of the fish being measured. Um, so this is just for the Rotauge, so for only for one fish species. Um, every fish that they caught was measured the length of it um, in millimeters or centimeters. That's still undetermined, um, probably millimeters, but you never know. Uh, and uh, there's different treatments that were applied. Um, so uh, the first treatment is uh, Totholz. I, I was like, I'm, I'm not a native German speaker, right? So I, I looked at this. So I saw Totholz. So the first thing that I do when I see a word which I don't know is I just throw it into Google. And Google told me that unter den Begriff Totholz versteht man stehende und liegende Baume oder Teile davon, die abgestorben sind. Es ist der letzte Entwicklungsprozess im Leben eines Baumes und einer der wichtigsten Strukturelementen unseres Wald. So from that I kind of figured out that probably they took like dead branches and wood and put it in the water. Then we had something which was called Flachwasserzone plus Totholz. I have no idea what happened exactly there. We have a controller group, which probably means that nothing happened. Then we have fish besatz, which someone told me is when you add fish to, uh, to, to the water. So you, you put in more fish. And then we have an unbewirtschaftete controller. And then I was really confused because how can there be two control groups? That, that it, I'm just like, 
as a statistician, when someone says, no, we have two control groups in our experiment, then I'm thinking like, okay, and what's the exact difference between it? And is it because it seems to me that there's some uncertainty about what really is your, your default group, so to speak. But I, I looked at it further and um, these are the definitions that I saw um, and the controller and the unbewirtschafted the controller, so the uncontrolled. The other, the one is fished, the other one is not fished. But you're doing an experiment where you're fishing lakes. So you mean that the unbewirtschafted the controller was never fished or wasn't fished by other people than you? Because that makes a big difference, right? No activity by recreational anglers. All right. And that, that means that you put a security guard around the lake and no one illegally fished it? Like there wasn't a, a, a group of foreign workers nearby that just every Saturday afternoon? Control is anglers go fishing there. All right. But you didn't put anything in the water. Interesting. I, I struggled with this because I, I chose a completely different control group. Because for me, the control group is before you put something in the water. That's the control group. That's something I don't know. Illegal fisheries never show up in data. That's not entirely true. That's not entirely true. Like if you're all of a sudden missing all of your fish in your lake, right? If you fish it one year and there's no fish coming up, then um, you can be damn sure that someone fished it. If it's your unbewirtschafted the controller fishing section. But uh, but it, it, like for me, it's, it's a little bit strange because um, natural predation. Yeah, well, it's really strange that all of the fish are gone, right? Then someone like hey, the, like predators are good, but they're not as good as to decimate a whole lake and there's nothing in there anymore. Um, but for me, the the like the control group is so if if I would set up an experiment, right? I would go to a lake, I would fish it for an hour, and I would see what I got out of the lake. Then I would put in my treatment right so i have like this benzoic acid and I, I just throw a barrel of it in the lake or i take like my nuclear waste and i just dump the nuclear waste in the lake and then i wait some time and then i fish it again so now my control group is the fish that i caught before the effect of the treatment is seen when i put in the nuclear waste or the, the benzoic acid, right? So for me, that makes most sense as a control group. Having other people fish there, of course, is, is logical, right? Because you're dealing with a dynamic system, but a control group, or at least in, in terms of statistics, means that it's, it's before and after the experiment, right? So you have before the experiment begins, you fish, this is your baseline and then you compare everything after your treatment to the baseline level. And then of course there can be different situations like controller, which means that people fish there. Unbewirtschafted the controller is something different because no one fished there. So these are different treatments, but your control group or your real kind of zero group, hey, your null hypothesis group or the ones that is the ones before you started doing anything. So before you did, but let's just look at some basic statistics, right? So the road auge, um, when I look at it, it looks like this. Um, so we have a, a, a puzzle here because we have a, a, a lake, a date and a point ID. And then we have a time point like before, and then we have treatment, which is the treatment that we just talked about. So if I look at the, I totally noticed that I totally missed them. It doesn't matter. Like I, I'd rather not know anything beforehand, right? Because then I can just look at the data with like an unbiased eye and say, this is weird or this is strange or this makes sense. Um, and, and this comes from the time that I was working as in, in human genetics. 
um, because there you get no data like all patients are anonymized and all treatments are also doubly blinded and that's the best research double blinded so that the researcher can't have any hypothesis and the data speaks for itself so um, but the, 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 the lake the data point and the point ID is uh, is kind of an interesting puzzle um, and because in this road auge it doesn't have the um, it doesn't have the, the length of the fish it just has the um, the treatment that was applied um, and then where the treatment was applied and then there was some other data about when it was done and um, this end um column which I thought initially was probably very important but I, I didn't touch it because it was um, strange but if we look at the treatment right so if we just look at the road auge treatment then it looks really really good right we have like massive sample size 17,000 fish which saw the treatment fish besides um, if we look at the, the the other treatments we also have really really high sample sizes which is really good because that means that we have a lot of statistical power but then I thought like let's include this time point thing right so before and after and the nice thing is the table function you can give it a vector and it will just table everything which is in the vector you can use the table function on a matrix which has two columns and then it gives you a split out across the treatments and across the time points so the table function really useful function really easy if you want to make two-way tables um, and then I saw something which was really good as well because we have as many fish caught before the treatment as after the treatment so that's really good if I look just look at like uh, toad holds right I have 821 um, road auge caught before I did anything and then after I did something I have a thousand so that's a really good statistical test right I could do a test of hey, if I would just do a t-test between the two groups I would t-test 800 an n of 800 versus the 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 n of around a thousand so that would give me massive statistical power and I could pick up like really really small effects um, of course um, I also split it out per year right because year is our kind of third massive dimension and um, if I do it like this now I thought this is strange because in 2017 there is only before treatment and no after treatment so that means here I do a t-test for toad holds on 821 fish before and zero fish after meaning I have no statistical power in 2018 it's the other way around and in 2020 it's also the other way around so yeah um, this is a little bit of a pickle because we just concluded that it's very hard to look across lakes across time because of the different effort put in and the different contributions of each of the lakes so we can't look at because inside a single year I would be very comfortable of testing before and after right because it's in the same year um, so that would be good but we can't do that so we run into an issue where we have no power to test within the year um, but we have power to test like alongside the year plus if I would look at this data in in this way oh my god um, if I'm falling out that's because uh, a lightning strike just cut off the stream um, but if I um, if I think about what happened is that in 2017 the different lakes were fished and then they put in the treatment and then they came back in 2018 and fished the lake again and then they did the same thing in, in 2020 so they fished the lake again and again this is after the treatment because the treatment was applied in 2017 so yeah that's a little bit difficult but we can make some um, statistics still right because we can look not we can't group all of the lakes together across the time because that's something that we we are probably not allowed to do statistically but we can look at a single lake 
across time when the lake is not Hopples, right? Because Hopples is a very weird lake. And then we have some of the other lakes, which are also relatively weird. Um, but um, probably any of the other lakes would be fine, right? The, the lakes which are stable across time are lakes which we can use um, to do the, the analysis here. Um, so we have to look or we have to do the analysis within one lake comparing 2017 to 2018 and then comparing 2017 to 2020 to see if the treatment that was applied had any effect on the size of the of the fish. So this was my hmm. So in 2017 they fished before they applied the treatment. So what is the control group then? So in my mind, uh, the it's getting really dark. Let me let me turn on a, a light here so that you guys can see me as well. So statistically speaking, the control group is all of the fish in 2017 because none of the fish that were caught in 2017 ever saw any treatment right so the the, the treatment column for 2017 is is actually a, a nonsensical column um, of course they were living under controller or onbewirtschaftete controller um, but in theory we are interested in the effect of the, the wood that we put into the lake. And if we, before we put any wood in the lake, then all of the fish were more or less living in different circumstances, right? Because a lake is either uh, fished or not fished or, um, but the, the treatment itself, the, the, the adding of the wood to the water um, was only done after the fishing in 2017. So the control group in my mind, so the, the base that we have to compare to is all of the fish caught in 2017 because they never saw any of the experimental influence that, that was applied to it. Um, and then we have of course 2017 versus the other years and then the, the, the why do we have this? But now we figured that out, what is the difference? So first let's look at the data and solve this lake data point puzzle. Right, because we have two different matrices and they are coupled together by this uh, lake date and point ID. Um, so the point ID is where was the fish fished and then we have the lake, which is the lake where um, the, the fish was fished, but they are, they are in two different matrices. So we have to merge this together um, to be able to say the fish that we caught at this point in time had these kind of treatments applied to it. So let's look at the road auge, right? So we have the, the road auge and, and first let's just look at the road auge. So if we if we look at the road auge across all of the different lakes, um, then we see that, that some lakes are actually useless. Like we can't use Lomar for anything um, because no road auge was ever caught there. Um, the same thing holds for Xella, no road auge was ever caught there. And if we apply to this, um, to the road auge matrix, the sum across the columns, then we see that there's like 149 road auge caught in 2017, uh, 274 in 2018, and 330 in 2020. Um, and if we sum them all together, then we have 735 road auge caught and weighed, uh, uh, measured length, lengthwise. But the conclusion here is that three lakes have not enough information on the size of the rogue auge before the start of the experiment. Because hence, like um, the Stedorf or Bachersee only had five fish caught before you threw the water or before the, the, the wood was added to the water. Um, and the same thing holds for the, the Meitzler, uh, Meitzler say only three were caught. So we could be lucky and we could catch three big ones or we could be unlucky and catch three little ones, but we can't compare uh, the 89 caught afterwards to the three that we caught earlier because we can only compare across t time and, and, and not between lakes. We can't easily group them. 
Yeah, so in two lakes we have limited information, so the Kothamster Kolk and the uh, Salsdorf. Um, and these are also strange because hey, in, in the Kothamster Kolk in 2018 we only caught one, so we can't say anything about the effect of the treatment um, from 2017 to 2018. Um, but and so two lakes need to be discarded anyway. So in the end we end up with three lakes which have a relatively solid before treatment group. Right? So this, these are three lakes we can do something with with them. Um, so let's look at the road auge in these three lakes. So first I'm going to just make a new variable which is called lakes, um, which has the names of the lakes in there. Um, then I'm going to use fishy road auge lakes, um, apply to this thing the sum and see how many fish I get. So I get um, 90, uh, 93 in 2017, 53 in 2018, and 152 in 2020. It means that in total there were like 300 fish caught um, um, across the three different years. Um, I make myself a little helper function to um, which as a input gets the fish data set of that year. Right, so the F data set is the is all of the fish caught with the length of the fish. Um, so this will tell me which rows are um, containing road auger, right? Because the 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 uh, the data set the the road auger variable which has the treatments that were applied to it um, doesn't have the lengths in there, so I have to f fit the lengths from there. Um, and then, of course, I, I want to just look at these three different um, three different lakes. Um, so I use my helper function here to determine from the F2017 which ones are caught in this lake and which are road auger and take those ones out. So I just make subsets, right? I could have used the subset function as well, but I, I generally just use this kind of structure where you use selection from the matrix. Um, so I determined that, uh, so I just made three subsets, Wiese de Meer, uh, Kiesteig and Salsdorf, and those are the, the for 2017, because I just wanted to first look at my control group. Um, but you see that we, we started off with having 753 fish measured, but from a statistical point of view, only 300 of those can probably be used to do any kind of statistics on because the other ones had, there could be a massive lake effect it could be that in lake number one a road auger on average is like 500 or uh, 500 millimeters big that's pretty big um, could be that in uh, that in lake number one there is a, a big lake effect um, making all of the fish bigger in that lake compared to the other lake um, so hey, so we start off with like a sample size of 753 and then we already have to reduce that to like 300 just based on the fact that not every lake has a reasonable amount of road auger caught and then I need to subset this per lake as well because I need to know for each of the lake how many fish there were. So my first question was how big is a road auger? So I created histograms um, and uh, the code will be online uh, because the code was just too big to fit on a slide to when you want to make it uh, look good. So here what we see is we see just the basic histogram. Um, it's not counted numbers but it's the density and here we see the size. Um, so I had some thoughts when I saw the histogram was like um, well the size, I thought it was measured in centimeters, but 100 plus, those are some pretty, pretty hefty fish. Um, but we figured out that it's a millimeter, so that's all fine. Um, but my first question is, is why is the Visa de Meer so different from all the other lakes? Why are like, like a bunch of the fish in the Visa de Meer much smaller than the other two lakes? And, and why are big fish or fish like above 70 millimeters only occurring in the Visa de Meer and not in the other two lakes? That makes no sense. If you would just randomly sample fish from a lake, then you wouldn't expect two lakes to be very different in the range, right? The range of the data should be very similar. The smallest fish in lake one should be 
comparable to the smallest fish in Lake 2 and the biggest fish as well. So here there's, a, there's something really weird going on. And I, I don't know what a rote auge is, um, but I would definitely look into this a little bit more and see how big a rote auge really is. Because the average road auge in, in Wiese de Meer is much bigger than the average road auge in the other two mirrors, uh, in the other two lakes that, that were fished. And that was just that was just striking to me. When I zoomed in a little bit in this area to compare the other two, all of the three lakes show a very, very different distribution. So so none of these three lakes um, have sizes of uh, fish besides treatment. Um, no, that can't be the case in this case, um, but it, it could be. Why did you change color? You're now red in all of a sudden. Um, but it, it could be, it could be that there is some kind of treatment going on. But for the statistical power, because we actually want to use these 300 fish, we need to be able to group these lakes. And we definitely can't group these lakes at all, because Every, all these three lakes have very different size distributions. So we can't just merge them all together. That's statistically not allowed. If two things are different, you can't merge them. Um, my other big question is, is why is there no Gaussian distribution? Why does this seem like more or less a two-part distribution where you have relatively big fish and you have relatively small fish? Yeah, I, we're only looking at 2017. This is the control group, right? Nothing happened here. So no treatments were applied yet. That's, that's, that's the thing that I found really strange. And, and um, hey, of course, there something happened to the lakes before you started doing your experiment as well, right? Um, that's just the, the thing that it is. Because it's a lake, people can go there, um, like, but... I would definitely check out the Wiese de Meer and, for example, Salsdorf and see what the difference is between the lakes when you, before you started the experiment. Because either all the big fish in Salsdorf were not there because of some reason, um, or so th there's something strange going on, and I didn't know what. Um, why there is no Gaussian distribution in any of the lakes also puzzled me a lot, um, because if you would just have fish growing in a lake and there's no real pressure or anything on these, right? If they're not like, um, if there's no sluice that they have to get through to get to the lake, and that's not the case because all of these lakes have no um, in and out put. Um, so I was, I was really wondering about why there's no real Gaussian distribution. I would have expected a relatively normal Gaussian distribution, especially with the number of fish that we're looking at. So grouping them together I would have expected a really beautiful Gaussian. Um, there are massive morphological and productivity differences between the lakes. Yeah that's what I thought um, and that's also what you see from the data. You can't really group lakes together um, because every lake is more or less a unique environment um, which makes this whole experiment a lot harder because a lake is actually not a replicate of the previous experiment. They're actually all individual little experiments that you do. Um, and, and that makes it really hard. Um, but yeah, so um, l let's compare them, right? So let's just take uh, one lake and let's look at the three different years that we have. So I went for Kiesteig Brechlinge, um, here this one, because it had 32 fish in 2017, 53 fish in 2018 and 37 fish in 2020. Um, Rotauga. So, uh, the, 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 so that, uh, the, that's the kind of, um, it, it's kind of a relatively okay sample size. You can compare 30 with 50 with 37. Um, so when we zoom in a little bit more, um, and this one didn't have the weird thing here as well, so I was thinking that that's a good lake to compare. Right, so I just take out the three different subsets, create a new histogram, um, and then we see that they are looking relatively normal. Um, so that's kind of good. So first instance, it doesn't look that normal, um, but when you zoom in a little bit, it, it kind of looks like three different normal distributions. 
Um, so that's kind of okay. This, these two peaks here are a little bit strange. Um, but of course, when we just compare them by eye, we see that there's something going on. And 2017 seems to be more or less in the middle. Um, fish seem to be a little bit smaller in 2018. They seem to be a little bit bigger in 2020. Um, okay, so let's see if that's true. Um, so when we do statistics, we first want to check if things are a normal distribution. And I just had did the Shapiro test, um, which we discussed in like lecture number six. So I just Shapiro test all of the three distributions that I have. Um, all three distributions pass the test, so they are not significantly different from normal. So we can just use parametric statistics, which is really good. Um, so let's pairwise t-test them. Um, so pairwise t-testing teaches us um, that um, in 2017 compared to 2018 there is a significant difference in the size of the fish um, and um, the mean in X, so in 2017 was 52, uh, 52 millimeters um, and the length in 2018 was 49 millimeters, 49.3. Um, so they became indeed a little bit smaller in 2018 and um, there seems to be like a three millimeter increase in 2020 compared to 2017 and i'm only doing 2000 because 2017 is my control group for from my statistical perspective i would say that that is the control group it is before you did anything so how we compare all of the years after treatment to the year before treatment um, and we see that there are significantly significant differences, right? So I do the t-test to determine the year effect because some years the weather will be warmer so fish will grow quicker or another year there might be a lot of rain so there might be more water in the lake or, or whatever, right? So there, there is a year effect, so there is a... Um, if we would do a linear model, then we would say the size of the fish is determined by the year that they were caught plus the treatment that was applied to them. And that's kind of the model that I'm trying to build. But first I want to use some t-tests to see if there is really a year effect. So there is a year effect, so we should include a year effect into our linear model. Um, so and let's, let's do some statistics. Um, and so the outcome from the t-test is, is that they're relative to 2017. In 2018, fish were 2.6 millimeter smaller, which is statistically significant. And I also wrote down the confidence interval. So had a, the real value should be somewhere between 0 0.6 millimeters and like 4.8 millimeters. Um, and relative to 2017 and 20. 20 fish were like 3.3 millimeters bigger um, so confidence intervals so there is a significant year effect so we can do a linear model for a linear model we need to have our lengths in a vector and we need to have our years in a vector so what I did is I just say take the um, have so from the subset that we created so keys uh, 2017 take the length of the fish from 2018 take the length of the fish and from 2020 take the length of the fish combine them together and we call this our lengths vector then I'm going to make my covariate right so the covariate is just two thousand or the, the character 2017 repeated the number of rows that we have in 2017 I'm going to repeat 2018 the number of rows that we have it in 2018 and I'm going to do the same thing for 2020 so I'm just creating two vectors I'm going to create our model and my model is just going to say well make a linear model of the length of the fish compared to the years that they were caught and then indeed we see exactly the same as what we see with the t-test had the intercept so in 2017 they were like 52 millimeters long 2018 they were smaller 2020 they were bigger so very similar to the t-test so the linear model and the t-test come up with the same answers and this is of course because the assumption of normality is more or less it, it more or less holds um, so that's good all right, so now we get to the treatments. So can we now say anything about the treatment on the size of the fish? So I made this little function, which is the get treatments function, um, which takes the lake and the point in the lake that was fished. 
right? So it takes the road auger matrix, it takes the lake column out of there, and then make sure that we only take the ones which are the lake that we are interested in. And then I say, well, and take the point ID as the point ID, so head, take this. So I call this II, so these are the rows in road auger for which the lake is lake and the point ID is point ID. I take the treatment, right? So the treatment is the unique of the road auger II treatment because the, the, the road auger is the, um, is, is the animal that, uh, it, this is the, hey, because I, I need to take the unique because of the fact that um, um, the, the same lake and point is in the road auger data set multiple times. I don't know exactly why, I think it's always in there three times, once for 2017, once for 2018, and once for 2020. Um, but if the length of the treatment after the unique, after making it unique is, is larger than one, then I want to throw a stop error because that means that there's something really wrong, right? Because that means that at the same position in the lake, two different treatments were applied and I don't think that that's possible. Um, or at least at least for the the, the 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 toad holds right because i'm i'm only interested in the wood because that's something that you put in the water so hey is there an influence of that and if if that is not the case right so if there's only one treatment applied to this point in this lake then i just return the treatment so 2017 is our before group so i'm going to make a vector called treatment which will just for each fish in 2017 have the word before, right? Before treatment, before treatment, before treatment. And it, it has the length of the number of rows in, in 2017. And then I'm going to go through 2018, so the fish, the measurements in 2018, and I'm going to get the treatment from the lake that we are investigating, and then for this fish, I'm going to take the point at which the fish was caught, and then I'm going to use my get treatments function to get the applied treatment on this fish. And then I add this to my list of treatments, right? So in the end, I'm just making a new vector, the same as that I made the, um, the year vector um, for 2017. All of the fish will have treatment group before treatment. And then in, 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 the, in the rest of the fish, um, the vector will contain the treatment that was applied to the fish. And so I have to do the same thing for 2020 as well. And then I just did a did a table of the treatments to see which treatments were applied. And then I did my linear model again, right? Because I now have the length of the fish, I have the year in which it was caught, and I have the treatment which was applied. And now something strange happened, because when I looked at my model, it says, well, the standard fish caught in 2017 was 52 millimeters. In 2018, they were smaller, and in 2020, they were bigger. The effect of the treatment of toad's hold is NA. And I thought, NA? What, what's going on here? But it turned out, and let me switch you guys to R, and let me just load in this part of the analysis, just so that I can show you. Um, let's just have all of the code just run by. So just to make sure that I have everything loaded correctly. All right, filling up the fishies, counting them, showing some of the total fishies, recounting them, making the plots, figuring out which lakes we can merge some of the other figures we already saw, some of the histograms, our helper function, and then our treatment, right? So our treatment is before, and then um, we have to figure out the treatment for 2018 and 2020. And now when I do a table of our treatment, uh, treatment like this, then I see this. 32 fish were caught in 2017 and fall into the before group. But all of the fish caught in 2018 saw the toad holds treatment. All of the fish caught in 2020 also saw the toad hold treatment. 
So that means that when I when I look at my uh, model, right, and I do a C bind of uh, the um, how did I call it the lengths, the years, and the treatments, then it looks like uh, not treatments, treatment. Sorry. Then it looks like this, right? So I have the length of the fish, the year it was caught, and the treatment that was applied to it. So the 2017 are my basic group, but then I see that all of the fish caught in 2018 saw the toad holds treatment. All of the fish in 2020 also saw the toad hold treatment. And this is a clear sign of collinearity, because there was no fish in 2020 which did not see the toad hold treatment. So that means that we cannot investigate the effect of the treatment because of this uh, collinearity effect, right? Where all of the variance that could have been explained by toad holds is actually explained by the year by year effect, which we saw was a very significant effect. So we cannot leave year out of the model. It has to be in the model. And so when I then do the, uh, do the linear model, um, then the linear model, um, is just saying I cannot estimate any of these effects right because like I can estimate the effect for 2018 I can estimate the effect of 2020 but I cannot estimate the the treatment effect in this case and and this is this is true because collinearity is one of these issues where where you run into collinearity eh, because um, every woman in the, the, the uh, control group. And so if you have a case control study, right, and all of your cases are males and all of your controls are females, and then of course the drug that you gave them doesn't really matter because every change or every difference that you see can be explained by the difference in males versus females. So that's why you generally randomize the treatment versus being male or female, right? So you say 50 males get the treatment, 50 females get the treatment, the control group, 50 males don't get it, 50 females get it. But you never randomize in such a way that the treatment is only given to males and, and, and females are not giving any treatment. Because then you, your, your, your experiment is collinear with um, some other effect. So then all of the, the differences that you see could come because you are comparing males to females or when you are comparing um, or and not the drug. And that's the thing which happened here because here all of the fish saw the toad holds treatment in 2018 and in 2020 um, but the before group didn't see any of the toad holds treatment but we have no fish from this lake which didn't see the treatment. Um, so let's just go back. So unfortunately the basic rules of experimental design were broken because every fishing spot was treated. This means that treatment is collinear with the year effect. This means that we can make no statement about the treatment since it could just be the year effect. It could just be the fact that 2018 was a very warm year so fish were smaller and 2020 was a very hot year so fish were bigger. But the treatment we cannot say anything about because all fish in 2018 saw the treatment and all fish in 2020 also saw the treatment. So we, 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 we can't assign the variance to the treatment, we have to assign the variance to the year. Alright, so that was it for today. This is my take home message from looking at it. Experimental design is hard. And I already told you that. This is the slide that I showed you before. Always consult a statistician before setting up an experiment. Use blocking and randomization techniques to make sure that you have a control group and a treatment group, but that none of the other covariates are aligning with this. I only looked at a single lake and I only looked at a single fish species. It might be that the treatments in the other lakes or in the other fish species might be better randomized or might be better blocked. But the distribution in 2017 
is very different from the distributions in 2018 and 2020. So we can group lakes to get another, um, another group which did not see a treatment. So uh, comparing across lakes, since, since the lake effect needs to be considered then, because then our model would be that the fish, right, the size of the fish is dependent on the year that they were caught, plus the lake that they were caught in, plus the treatment that they saw. But th this won't solve the collinearity that we just saw for this one lake between the, um, between the treatment and the year, because even if another lake has these differences then that doesn't help us for saying anything about this Kiesteig Brellinge. So data gathered in Kiesteig Brellinge cannot be used to investigate the effect of Toadshold on the Rotauge because of the collinearity. And that is that is something that I found a little bit of a shame and, and a little bit of a, a little bit worrying as well. Anyway, this is my take home message. This is the data analysis that I, I did. I, I thank you uh, very, very, very much for the data set. I enjoyed working on it. Um, like I said, I, I generated 245 lines of code. Um, I will send you the code. Um, I will, we should discuss later to see if we should put the data set on Moodle. Um, or if we should put uh, um, put it on uh, or yeah, so that the other people can play with it as well um, or if we put the code on Moodle. Uh, we should also discuss if you want to have the lecture today um, on, uh, on on YouTube. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, we, we should definitely talk about this more. Um, but I really enjoyed uh, um, um, w working on it and I, I thank you for um, letting me look at your data and just kind of going through. Um, I hope you guys learned something about like how to use like a three-dimensional matrix. Um, I think we should definitely put the code on Moodle and uh, that, that people can at least look at the code and um, yeah, because the code for the histograms and stuff I didn't show. Um, so that was it for today. So are there any questions? Is there any discussion that you would want to engage in? Are there any questions that you want to ask me? Um, and I think most of the time actually didn't went in writing the code. It, it went in like writing down the, the slides. If not YouTube, can the lecture still be on Moodle? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I think that the lecture should be on Moodle. I'm just wondering if, if, it's, a, if it's an idea to put it on YouTube or if it's like, well, rather not right like it's it's that's the thing it's not my data um, and um, I use the names of the lakes and stuff and I know that some researchers and can be relatively protective of some of the effects or lakes or cows or or other things that they use um, for example if we um, publish data about cows since they are production animals which live on farms all right, you have a lot of questions. I will write them up first and send an email. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you're more than welcome to um, just make an appointment and come by in the office that we can sit together, look at the data and um, just discuss the questions. Um, so sending my email is fine, but um, need to rewatch the recording. Yeah, sure, that, that's not an issue. Um, yeah, so um, le let me know what would you guys want more. And uh, yeah, yeah, just come by the office. Then we can just sit and talk and, and look at the data and, and play with it and, and see. Because I'm not a fish specialist, right? Like I'm, I'm just a statistician. So um, if people give me data, I generally don't care if it's from fish or from, from other things or um, um, like. All right, perfect. So Thank you guys very, very much. Um, let me let me do uh, something like this. <laughs> it's such a nice thing. I really love it. I really love it. I actually have buttons to actually kind of show you the R window. Don't show, show, don't show, don't show, show. That's much easier than I, what I used to do is just click on the thing and have to like figure out which one. Um, so. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you liked the new style as well. So any comments or discussion about 
the, the style of the slides compared to the older style, which is um, which is this style, right? So with the with the like with the wave, which I know a lot of my colleagues don't like. A lot of colleagues say that well, your slide design that you always use, you lose like thirty percent of your slide just by the header, and I'm like. Yeah, that's that's a, a, a choice that I make to not overload slides with text or not overload them with like pictures and stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah, the birthday. Yeah, I should have actually put in like a birthday audio thingy, um, but I, I didn't have that much time this morning to prepare and I spend almost too much time playing with it anyway. So and, and I had to do other stuff. And, Ah, yesterday was also madness because we had to do an emergency mouse dissection um, because one of the mice was sick, so uh, I had to set up everything for that. But I will have a good birthday. I already had cake this morning, so it's good waking up, starting off with cake. So um, thanks to my moderator, of course, and girlfriend, and got some really, really nice gifts. So uh, I'm going to have a good birthday. All right, so if there's no uh, comments or other things, then um, this was the last slide that I made. So stream just ended. See you next time. Or if you're seeing this, you're too late. So if you're... S Happy birthday. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, it's a shame that we can't have an in-person lecture. Then uh, we uh, we would have uh, cake and, and that kind of stuff. But... Uh, Unfortunately, we can't do that due to Corona. All right, then. Thank you all for watching next year. You're very optimistic. You're very optimistic that uh, I think it still is going to take two years. Like from a virology perspective, like the second wave is just starting and then we have the third wave next so i think that in like july 2023 we will be fine again so all right then uh guys have a very very good um evening and um very very much good luck on the exam next week i hope everyone already signed up if you didn't sign up you're probably too late um, but thank you for watching and i will see you guys sometime i don't know we don't have an extreme plan so it's gonna be tricky i might play a little bit of online games when i have a little bit of free time but uh See you guys soon and uh, good luck on the exam.